Hello folks, Jason Christman here at JC's Bees. Today I want to discuss something that it seems like I discuss every year at this time, and that is mites. I keep seeing in the comments and on different videos and on Facebook how my bees don't have mites and his does and must have got mites from his because my neighbors don't have any mites and so forth and so on. Well, let me tell you folks, and I hate to break the news to you, and you don't have to believe, maybe you can do your own research. Everybody's colony has mites. There's no way around it. Some colonies are able to manage the mites a lot better and they keep the mite count really low. For instance, Purdue ankle biters. Um, if you don't know anything about them, take a minute and Google them. These bees like to chew on things and one of those things is mites. But I'm also, I've never had these bees, but I've read a lot about them and I know a lot of people that do have them. And from what I'm hearing, they're a little bit more aggressive than I like. So that's my reason for shying away from the Purdue ankle biters. Um, if you think that your colony has zero mites, you're only fooling yourself and you're only hurting your bees. You have to do an appropriate mite wash, and that's what this is for, and I'm gonna explain it in a minute, to know where your mite level is. Just a couple days ago, I had a comment from a fellow named Joe, and he's kind of inspired this video. Joe asked me, is there any negative effects to treating without doing a mite wash? And I replied, no. The, the downside to not doing a mite wash is a disadvantage to the beekeeper, not really the bees so much. See, when you don't do your mite wash, you don't know where your mite level is, so you don't know what kind of traits your bees are producing. Maybe they're producing some kind of a trait that's keeping the mite count really, really low. Maybe the next colony has a really, really high mite count. So if you were ever to make splits or take queen cells from a colony, you would want to take them from the one with the lower mite count. But you're not going to know any of this information because you said, hey, I don't want to do this. I'm just going to go straight to treating. Bad, bad decision, folks. Um, I guess I would rather see you treat without the mite wash and go into winter versus doing neither. So, with that said, I want to discuss this cup that I just threw over my shoulder. After I go get it. Before I get into this though, one thing I want to discuss is a video that I released last year and I think it's crucial for all new beekeepers to go watch it. And it's called something to the regards of, I didn't treat because I didn't see any mites. I'm going to link it up here in the corner. Now I don't want you to leave right now and go check it out. It'll also be linked at the end of the video. But make sure you take a minute and watch it because it's very, very important. Okay, on to the easy check. This is a very, very simple device to use. It works very, very well. What this is, is a way to do your mite wash. You gotta remove your instructions. And here you've got a cup that you're going to place your bees into. Down on the inside, there is two distinctive lines. I believe the top line is for approximately 300 bees. So you would take this and you would put approximately 300 bees in there. And I know how you're going to, well, you could count them. No, you use a cup, a one cup measuring cup. And I've got a video that shows how to use this. And I'm going to link it up in the corner also. Take a minute, educate yourself, learn more about these mites and how to control them. This is a very, very handy device to have, and I believe it's like $20, $25. Very handy device. And I imagine you could also use this for powdered sugar, but I can't say for sure because that's not my go-to method. I would prefer to use rubbing alcohol or wind-chilled washer fluid. And yes, that is gonna kill the bees, but you have to look at it this way. I'm sacrificing 300 bees from my colony for the health of the colony and for their survival over winter. So I consider that very crucial. Now if you look at research online, you're going to see that the alcohol might wash or the windshield washer fluid is going to wash off or dislodge mites from bees a lot better than powdered sugar. You're going to get a better reading, a more accurate reading by doing the methods with the alcohol or the washing fluid. So just an idea there. Like I said, watch this video if you want to know how to do this. 
Now up here I have a couple devices and sure these are both oxalic acid treatments. But one thing I like about the oxalic acid treatments is they only cost pennies to treat each hive after you own the devices. Um, this is one I have linked in my Amazon store. Very, very handy device. It's a vaporizing wand. And how it works is you shove it in the entrance of your hive. You put towels around the rest of the entrance to block uh, the vapor in. You uh, hook it up to a car battery. And minutes later, you see vapor starting to come out any small holes or seams in the hive. You remove this, you plug it back up with the towel to keep the fumes in for I believe 10 minutes and you move on to the next hive. Now the downside with this is if you've got more than say eight hives, you're gonna spend most of your time treating because this is a very, very time intensive thing. But if you've got only got a few hives, this is a great tool. Um, what we've got here is my homemade ProVap. Very, very handy device and it does the same thing as the wand, but in a much quicker manner. Um, for instance, it's just a couple minutes per hive and you're on to the next one. This thing heats up a lot quicker than that. Um, you have these caps, you put the acid in there versus putting the acid in this tray. And you simply turn this upside down once it's hot, push it down on, and you, you go and treat. You don't turn it upright though until this is inserted into a hole on your hive. And a lot of people are drilling holes in the back and towards the bottom right above the, uh, the screen bottom or your bottom board. And they stick this in the hole and once they pull this back out they stick a golf tee in the hole. That way the bees don't propolize the hole shut. A very very effective method. Now you do have to do three treatments and they're I think seven to ten days apart three times. And the reason for that being is with oxalic acid, which is what we've got here, it does not kill mites within capped brood. So it only kills the mites on the bees that are out walking around on the comb and inside the hive, not inside the comb. So that's why you have to do the three treatments. By this calculation, every week you would have new bees emerge from the brood and you would wipe off the mites on them does not affect the bees at all and oxalic acid is actually in honey so it's not harmful at all now they do recommend you remove the honey supers when you do this so you might want to think time accordingly when are you pulling your supers and do I have enough time to do these three treatments so that they have time to raise healthy bees before it gets cold you don't want to treat last minute if you treat last minute say I treated today it's 65 degrees right now I go through the whole bee yard, I treat everything, 7 to 10 days I'm supposed to come back out here and do it again. And 7 to 10 days it's 45 degrees. Eee, it's starting to get cold quick. Now I'm starting to wonder, are my bees going to be able to produce mite free or disease free bees before winter? I want healthy bees to overwinter on. And see these mites, they infect your bees with all kinds of pathogens and diseases. Um, some of the diseases are actually visible, like deformed wing. When you got a folded up wing, pretty much a useless bee because you're not flying anywhere. So you start to get a colony of them, colony dwindles very quickly. And that's all due to a uh, varroa mite population. So this is not the only method to treat mites. I mean, there's so many on the market anymore. Um, my old fallback used to be uh, Mite Away Quick Strips. But those are getting very pricey when you've got very many hives. Um, I'm going to take a guess. I'm thinking it's like nine, ten dollars a hive. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody can correct me here. But it's very, very expensive when you've got very many hives. Now, what I've got back here is a method that a lot of people speak very highly of, and I've always been very curious about it. What this is is sumac berries. I've been told for years, you put this in your smoker, you smoke your bees with it, mites just drop like crazy. I haven't experimented with it, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Over the next couple weeks, I'm going to play around with smoking some bees with the sumac berries. I'm going to see what kind of a mite drop I got, and I'm going to produce a video on all of this, and I'm going to share it with you all. So, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe. 
Um, if you enjoyed this video, throw me a big thumbs up. I'm not trying to give you a lecture. I'm just trying to stress to you how important it is that we manage our bees appropriately. Everybody's bees have mites. Some are just have a lot less. And when our bees meet on these flowers out in the pastures and the fields, mites hop from one to the other, and now your colony just got another mite. So let's keep all this in mind, folks, and let's try to raise some healthy bees for winter. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, leave them down below, and I'll try my best to answer them for you. I wish you all the best with your bees, and we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks for watching.